So this is the first part of my, what am I calling it, like IoT everything, or basically adding connectivity to things that typically don't have it but could benefit from it. And what you see in front of me is basically uh, I added connectivity to these flameless candles. The reason being, so on our mantle we have a bunch of them. I, th I think at least six, but it might be closer to eight. They look like this. They come in different sizes. They're plastic, and they have this little LED in there that fake flickers. You can kind of see it flickering over here. And what they are is they're battery-powered. You throw a couple batteries in there. You turn it on. There's three settings, on, off, and timer. And um, they flicker. The problem with them is they're battery-powered. So they last for about five weeks, five, six weeks, give or take then you gotta change the battery. So if we have you know, six of them up there, that's 12 batteries we're replacing about every six weeks. I have to keep on top of charging the batteries and then I have to replace them all at the same time so they eventually end at the same time. And another part um, that I don't like is, I mean it has on or off. I would never use on or off because I'd never go around and shutting off the candles at night. Um, so I use a timer function, and what it does is basically when you turn it on, it starts the timer, and then it will time down to, I think, five hours. They'll stay on, and they'll automatically come off, and then the next day they'll automatically come on again around the same time. That works, and that saves battery, but um, the problem is you have to turn the timer on when you want them to come on every day. So if the battery dies, and it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday, and I'm like, okay, let me change all the batteries, if I turn them back on then, then the candles are going to come on at 12 o'clock every day instead of 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, which is like when I want them to. So I had then have to wait until the appropriate time, set a timer, remember to do it, to turn it back on. It's just a pain in the ass. So what ends up happening is these candles sit up there, useless because I never change the batteries or I get sick of changing the batteries. And um, that seems kind of wasteful because they're kind of cool. They add a little ambience to the room and we like them, but the changing of the batteries sucks. So what I wanted to do is two part. One, hardwire them, which is pretty basic. Uh, I could have done that with just a wall warrant and string the wire together. That would have let me at least get rid of the battery part, which still would have been a major improvement. But step two, I wanted to kind of add them to my home automation system so that I could turn them off and on when I wanted to, basically on a timer that fits my schedule. Um, Nothing fancy, but it's just basically what can I add connectivity to around normal day, everyday objects that will benefit in some way, shape, or form. And since it's relatively cheap and easy to do now, uh, I figured why not start with this. So what you see is the product of the work that I did the past week to make this happen. This is one that hasn't been converted, and effectively what I'm just doing is going to daisy chain coming out of this little control box into this one, and then I'll daisy chain a wire out of this one. To the next one um, that part's easy it's basically just popping off this bottom part and soldering in a wire that will probably take me 15 20 minutes to get all of these connected after i'm done and no more batteries i'm also leaving it so that i don't have to use i mean i could use batteries if i wanted to again so if you look inside um, the battery is now gone and there's no harm done to this so i can pop in batteries and it'll still work and all I did was basically solder on the two leads over here to this. It's a, I think there's a little loose connection in here that keeps making it fall, but that's a simple fix. Then you can see how it works. The LED just goes up, and there's this little IC in here. I don't know what this does. It looks like a little resonator or something that basically makes that fake flicker. That's all it does. Um, as far as the circuit is concerned, it's a pretty straightforward circuit. It's kind of my typical... I call naked ESP circuit. Um, it's the ESP module over here on the right. These five resistors you see are various pull-ups and pull-downs to basically enable the chip. We have a little uh, capacitor in there to st stabilize the power. That's normal. All these are just normal components to make the ESP run. And then the LED is not really needed. I added that as just as a bonus to make sure the power is on. There's another uh, resistor underneath these blocker here that powers that. In the middle, there is an LM1117 3.3 volts, which converts the 5 volts from the USB down to 3.3 so that the ESP module can be powered correctly. 
on both sides of that you just see some 10 microfarad capacitors to clean the power coming in not not necessarily all the time i just you know for the 50 cents it cost why not the only thing interesting about this circuit i guess is a little more complicated is this little transistor you see right there and that's because I'm going to use multiple LEDs. In this setup with one candle, I wouldn't need that. I could drive it directly from the I.O. pin from the ESP module. But since I'm going to be driving six to eight of them or I could add more on, the power requirements are way too high for just the uh, I.O. pin of this, which I think has a source, can only produce about 12 milliamps from the pin. So that's about one of these LEDs. Um, so what the, all the transistors doing is the GPIO pin turns the transistor on and the transistor then flows the power directly from the power source um, to the candle. So the power is not actually flowing through the ESP module. Then there's a little uh, USB breakout board. I'm not using any of the data pins. All I'm using is the power pins on that um, and that's just driving the voltage regulator. The reason I went with USB, interesting enough, I was originally going to use just a normal kind of barrel connector and use a, a power um, brick to, to drive it, but I have a NVIDIA shield on the mantle already that I'm using for the TV, and that has USB out, and that can actually power things, so I figured instead of putting another wall port there and having another cord going up to the mantle to power this, I would instead just connect this USB to the NVIDIA shield, which will then power this, which will then power the candles. So that's how it works. I didn't really draw up a schematic for this because it was so basic. One thing, um, it's hard to tell in this, it's very cramped in here. And it's hard to tell from this, but you can see how the USB modules tilted up. I kind of went a little too tight with these resistors over here. And there's actually a fourth resistor for the LED underneath those resistors, and they touch. So I have to be very careful not to push it. You can see all that tape around there, trying to mask it off. Um, and if they touch, it just resets it. So I fought with that for a while, figuring out, what, trying to figure out why things were just flickering and weren't working. And then I finally lifted that up and everything worked. And a little debugging, I figured out that's what I did. So planning would have helped in this case. I didn't plan and it came back to bite me in the ass by causing this little bug, which wouldn't be hard to fix. I could unsolder some things and move it around, but as long as um, it stays like this, it's fine. Little cover fits on top of it, just as 3D printed, nothing fancy, very basic box um, just to contain the components. And if we look at, so what I do, this is just showing you like how to, how they actually turn on and off. So you can see I'm just issuing commands to the MQ, MQTT server to turn it on and off a one or zero. <laughs> That's it, very basic. Topic is candle and it will turn it on and off. So this is the code that will do that. And again, very simple. Um, this does not, some of these things was actually like this stuff was all you can see, I still have the leftover stuff was taken from the party button code. Cause the party button code is the same, just kind of instead of subscribing to a topic, it publishes to a topic. So I ripped out the I, I don't even probably need these. I can probably change the client I'm using. I can change that to endless candle. And this I am not using. Everything else, light pin, this is actually going to the transistor to turn it on. I start up, I set that output, I turn it on instantly, and then I do the normal setup Wi Fi, uh, setup MQTT routines that I have here that work. Pretty well and just pretty basic and this is new setting callback to the mqtt server and then i subscribe to that candle topic right here and the callback which is being set here is called when a message comes in with that topic and this is pretty simple this is actually from the demo of the uh, pub sub example the all I did, they were turning on an LED, which is very convenient because that's what I'm doing here. And it just checks the message payload, um, which you could see from here is just one or zero. And if it is one, it turns the pin high, which would turn all LEDs on. If it's low, it turns it low. 
So that's it. So there's not much going on in the code on this actual little board. Most of the stuff to turn it on and off will happen in Home Assistant, which I'm using to, to control everything. But um, all in all, this took, I mean, it took over three day span because what I started with was printing the box and getting it correct. And then I had to figure out what I wanted to do for power and then realizing I have to use the transistor to turn things on instead of the actual thing. So it, and this isn't obviously three days solid. This is three days, an hour in the morning. Um, so maybe about three hours worth of work to do this project. And I'm not done. I got to daisy chain the LEDs together um, and then update the home assistant to actually turn this on daily. But that again, maybe another hour to do all that all said and done. But I'm pretty happy with it, and I guess cost-wise, we're talking... So I think the naked setup that I have here on a normal module, I came to about 225 for that voltage regulator. Um, I don't know if I have... I, I keep track of these, I just don't know where, if I did it for this project or not. It's definitely under $5. It's probably under $4. It might even be under three dollars for this project so um, very cheap to do but it, it solves a very practical real I wouldn't say problem first world problem that I have right I want to use these candles but I can't use them because I have to change out the batteries every you know five to six weeks which is a pain in the ass so I'll spend three bucks and three hours of time to solve the problem with some technology and then it'll be done I won't have to one less thing to stress over um, in my daily life. So this is the first project of the series. I'm going to try to do a bunch of other things. I have a, a list of things that I'd like to add connectivity to, uh, but this was kind of the most basic one, the most, the easiest one I could see that required very little work, um, both software and hardware, so I sort of decided to start with it. I'll put everything I have about it in the description. There's not much to it because, again, it's a very basic project, but um, feel free to ask any questions if you have them, and uh, hope you learned something.